one man, two dog project. Roll them. Caretaker, Dominion. Action. Epilogue. Caretaker, Dominion. Four years after Hotel Originaldo. Extra, extra, read all about it. The Great Originaldo returned to hallowed ground today. Extra, extra, read all about it. Caretaker, Dominion. Ladies and germs, I mean gentlemen, as you know by now, after watching this film, my name is David Daniels, and I'm here to say that the time of this epilogue is several years after Pip died, and my cousin Klaus is returning, only a few years older, but many years wiser, or so we'd like to think, to add a final brief comment on the epilogue, which will contain what he claims to be the most important realization of his entire life. That said, I welcome you here to beautiful Art Hill, in front of the St. Louis Art Museum. In just a moment, my cousin Richard, Originaldo Krauss, will be coming home to this hallowed spot from his dismal Tri-County Book and Art Tour. Hold on, folks. I think someone in the observation tent has spotted my eccentric but determined cousin. There, up in the sky. It's not a bird. It's not a plane. It's a super flyer. Wait, that's not that well. The damn terrorist trying to shoot down an unarmed, flying, football deal in art gallery. Man, what's the world coming to? Hello out there. As my cousin so colorfully announced, my name is Richard Krause, and I'm honored to be here at the same hallowed spot where Lindbergh returned from Paris in the spirit of St. Louis way back in 1927. Before I begin, let me say that that rocket attack on my Spirit of St. Louis flying bookmobile, an art gallery here, was not a terrorist attack at all, but a couple of playful kids practicing up for the 4th of July. So without further ado, I'll begin my epilogue statement. I'd like to say... You'd like to say? Begin your what statement? I thought the whole purpose of all your artwork and stuff so you can make the video we just saw and stand up there and tell us all that the human population needed to be drastically reduced by all families having at most one kid. And that would supposedly fix everything we've messed up. Well, I've been thinking too. A big reduction in the human population might someday get rid of the negative impact of humans on Earth, but that's just a neutral thing. It's not positive. But I sure couldn't figure out what we could do so humanity would actually be a positive force on Earth not just not a negative force, you know what I mean. Good thinking, David. Like I was about to say before you so rudely but wisely interrupted me, though it's very brief and simple, I offer an epilogue statement that I've spent many past years thinking about. The idea of something, like you just alluded to, not just passively neutral, but undeniably positive that we humans could do. I call my proposal Caretaker Dominion on a purpose for human life. I think every sane person agrees that we humans inflict horrid torture, death, and unspeakable pain on totally innocent non-human animals. These are atrocities which we continue to perpetrate to this state at an ever-increasing pace for simple reasons of personal greed and convenience. We allow ourselves to get away with these horrible things because we feel a false sense of superiority to all other things on our planet. And that's just plain bullshit. Human superiority, just plain unadulterated bullshit. Yeah, I get your drift, cousin. What sin could all these non-human animals of the earth be guilty of to deserve such slaughter and such unspeakable pain inflicted by us humans and also inflicted by other animals? 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 
and also inflicted by other animals. inflicted by other animals. Huh? They sure didn't commit no original sin like we supposedly done. These non-human, instinct-driven animals are certainly, in their innocence, guilty of no sin deserving such treatment from us high and mighty humans. Are, like David said, from their fellow animals, for that matter. They are guilty only of living in a world controlled by sly but arrogant and ignorant homo sapiens who have achieved abusive dominion over them. I repeat that, abusive dominion. And our overinflated egos mislead us to believe we are free to do as we please. That's no joke. Yeah, a lot of my most educated buddies wonder their entire lives what the purpose is for everything. They even wonder if there is a purpose for human life at all. They wonder if we developed a big brain just so we could get real civilized and pretend we're not like other animals. What kind of bullshit purpose is that? Well said, David. One of the reasons humans have wrought so much destruction in recent times is because with extreme division of labor in modern society, with each person just doing a very small part of the whole job, very few such simplified jobs supply the creative reward of doing a challenging project on one's own, as was done years ago. So, in lieu of a natural creative reward of mental well-being and satisfaction from a job well done, we are forced to find artificial rewards in the surrogate pleasures of entertainment, food, sex, sports, playing children's games when we're an adult, or I should say watching adults play children games, etc. Using these sensory pleasures as ends unto themselves rather than simply as motivators for biologically necessary pursuits and functions. And in the never satisfying and never ending pursuit of these fruitless pleasures, we humans have cared less how much damage is done to other things in the process. And as far as David's comment concerning his so-called intellectual friends wondering as to the very purpose of life, I too have wondered quite a bit actually. And at an advance near the end of the line age, I can believe there is only one possible purpose. I don't believe it. What possible bullshit purpose could you have possibly come up with? Quite simple, actually, and it's certainly not bullshit. I propose that all humans of all societies, of all countries, devote their entire lives and all their technologies to move our species toward one goal, toward someday becoming benevolent, I repeat, benevolent caretakers of both the earth and all creatures on it. No matter how many years, centuries, or millennia it may take, humans now have the ever-growing technology and genius to someday realize a planet where no animal, human or non-human, hunts, slaughters, tortures, or consumes any other creature. You mean there will be no carnivorous or omnivorous predators at that distant day if we begin now, while we still have the ability and slight modicum of sanity to do such a humongous thing before we destroy each other? And our ongoing purpose after that realization will be to see that no predators, ourselves most of all, return. Carbon dioxide hungry plants and oxygen hungry animals will live in total symbiotic harmony except of course 
for the painless taking of plants for animal nourishment and the painless taking of animal waste and remains for plant nourishment. There will be many who will label such a plan to eliminate all predatory practice as playing God. So be it. Is it not better than playing the part of the devil as we have been for so very long? But, as a matter of fact, I ask you, my dear cousin, and all other caring souls on this planet we share, had not somebody better play God? And the job falls upon us humans by default, only because no other species can do it. So I repeat, our ongoing and only collective mission in life, our only purpose for living, should be to seek out all predators on earth and either convert them or sterilize them in the most pain-free way possible. Certainly, with the help of both Mother Nature and Divine Destiny, we can achieve this inevitable and wonderfully good end. Bravo! Putting Mother Nature and Divine Destiny aside, how can it possibly be accomplished pain-free, I ask? Huh? If not today, then someday soon our high technology will allow us to chemically alter the DNA or some other system of the predator in a painless way so as to become an herbivore or to be rendered sterile or infertile, unable to reproduce and perpetuate their instinctual yet no less horrid ways. You want far out too, Cousin Originaldo. What you propose has a one in a million chance of ever being enacted. More like one in a billion chance, okay? But don't the doctors of a dying cancer patient try almost anything to save the life, no matter how scant the chances of succeeding? Well, our human society has been a cancer on the face of the earth, and along with our host, the earth, our so-called society is dying. So we need to try to execute a cure, no matter how monumental the task of enacting that cure is. And to be totally honest, I believe it is the true destiny we humans were born to, that's right, born to, to eliminate all predators from the planet. And with little time left for myself, I want to get that notion on the record so I can at least selfishly feel that I have lived a less than pleasurable life for some positive purpose, even if it is but to put forth what will surely seem like a radical and apparently ridiculous idea, even to the few people who will ever hear it in this epilogue. I think I got it, Doc. You say it's our destiny, not to develop technology for our own pleasuring and longevity, but to develop technology to control the atrocities of predators. To such an end of inter and interspecies war and butchery, I say cheers and amen. You got my vote, Dr. Krausdenheimer. See you later. Caretaker Dominion. Look at them both very closely, folks. Cry a little tear if you can. Man was here. Dead Earth by Homo sapiens. The sole purpose of human life. No predators on earth. The sole task we were born to. Caretaker Dominion. Because the choice is ours.